Hello and welcome back to my channel, Miri Creations. I hope everyone had a lovely winter holiday. And if you are new here, welcome. And my name is Miri and I love all things embroidery. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to do 11 different types of embroidery stitches that are perfect for beginners. So grab a cup of tea or a matcha latte in my case and enjoy the video. I received these beautiful DMC embroidery threads as a gift and I was originally going to use them in this video but I opted for cheaper threads from a no-name brand and I absolutely regret this decision. The quality of the threads does not compare with DMC and I will definitely have to do a review later this year. These are my trusty embroidery scissors that my mother got over two decades ago in South Korea and they are truly the best I have ever used. These needles I purchased from Amazon. If the product is still available, I'll make sure to link it down below in the description. And this large embroidery hoop I also purchased from Amazon. For the fabric, I'll be using a plain muslin cloth. And I would typically use embroidery fabric, but unfortunately due to the pandemic, the fabric I love has been sold out since March 2020, so this will have to do. I'm first going to draw some lines so I know where to stitch. And please forgive me, but I am a terrible speller. I am so embarrassed to say that I spelt split, lazy, and straight wrong. I spent eight years in university, but I clearly didn't learn how to spell. And I was able to correct split easily, but the other two words evaded me. Oh well. Our first stitch is the running stitch. We're going to start at the back of the hoop and pull the needle and thread all the way to the front. You are then going to thread back through and weave your needle through the fabric. The distance between the stitches all depends on what you prefer. Just repeat this weaving process until you're done. Our second stitch is the back stitch. Again, start at the back of the hoop and pull the needle and thread all the way to the front. And then do another stitch to the back from the top of the fabric. Come back up about a stitch length away and enter the same hole as we used to enter our first stitch. Repeat this process until you are done. Our third stitch is the split stitch. Start at the back of the hoop and pull the needle and thread all the way through to the front. And then do another stitch to the back from the top of the fabric. When you come to the front again, you want to start halfway between your previous stitch. You want your needle to split the thread strands as you can see here. About a stitch length away, complete the stitch by threading your needle to the back from the top of the fabric. Our fourth stitch is the stem stitch. If you have watched my previous videos, you will know that I love using this stitch around borders. It gives everything a nice completed look. This stitch is similar to the split stitch. However, when you come back to the front, halfway between your previous stitch, we do not want to separate the thread strands.
Our fifth stitch is the chain stitch. My most popular YouTube video is a baby Yoda and we use this stitch to complete his outfit. I just love the texture that this stitch gives. Start at the back of the hoop and pull the needle and thread all the way through to the front. Now we're going to go back down, getting as close as we can to the hole we just created. We're going to form a small loop here. Then we bring our needle back up to the front through the loop and this will create the chain. Repeat this process until you're done. All right, moving on to the sixth stitch, the fishbone. This stitch is super popular when it comes to creating leaves. Starting at the top of the leaf, from the back of the hoop, pull the needle and thread all the way to the front. Complete the stitch by threading it from the front to the back. Then, slightly to the right of the first hole, stitch from the back to the front. Complete the stitch by threading from the front to the back, slightly below the second hole. Repeat this on the left hand side. Then move again to the right hand side. Repeat this process until you're complete. The seventh is dun, 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 the French knot. This stitch is so cute and it is really easy. Many people use this knot to fill in flowers. Starting from the back of the hoop, pull the needle and thread all the way through to the front. Then wrap the thread a few times around your needle. I like to wrap about three times, but the more you wrap, the bulkier the knot will be. Then push your needle through the original hole you created. I like to do these slowly because it prevents the thread from tangling. The next stitch is the lazy daisy. <laughs> Oof, I cringe when I see the way I wrote lazy. It looked right at the time and clearly my brain was somewhere else. This stitch is often used when creating flowers. Starting from the back of the hoop, pull the needle and thread all the way through the front. You are going to create a loop and then push your needle from the front of the hoop to the back, going through the same hole you just created. You don't want to pull your thread all the way through because you want to keep that loop. Then you're going to go to the top of the loop and push the needle through to the front again. We're going to secure this little loop in place by pushing your needle through to the back. Repeat this process until you have finished your flower. The ninth stitch is the straight stitch, and if you've watched my previous videos, you will know that this is the stitch I most commonly use. It is so easy, and I really like how it gives a nice seamless look. The straight stitch is exactly how it's named. Start from the back of the hoop and pull your needle through to the front, and you can create any size for the stitch length. Push your needle through to the back. So simple. And I also like to stagger my straight stitches here. Our 10th stitch is the satin stitch. This one is super popular when filling in large spaces and it gives the piece a fluffy look. I don't typically use this type of stitch in my designs because I just love the straight stitch so much, but this stitch is exactly like the straight stitch except the stitches are long. When I do these satin stitches, I make sure I do it slowly to ensure that my thread is entangled. And 
last but not least, we have the woven wheel, also known as the rose stitch. This stitch is so pretty, and as the name suggests, many people use this stitch for roses. Start by completing five long straight stitches that meet in the middle. Then, you are going to bring your needle from the back to the front as close as you can to the center. You are going to weave your needle and thread around the five straight stitches you just completed, skipping one stitch each time, as you can see here. And there you have it, 11 stitches perfect for beginners. Comment below and let me know which stitch is your favorite. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future embroidery videos. Also make sure to check out my Etsy shop for printable PDF embroidery patterns. The link is down below in the description. I will see you all next time and remember, have fun. Bye!